Welcome back. The fourth piece of working memory that I want to tell you about is something called the episodic buffer. And this is a piece that Badley added later to his model. He needed to figure out a way to get working memory um, to be influenced by meaning. And so the episodic buffer is basically the go-between between short-term memory or working memory and long-term memory. This connection to working memory is what allows chunking to happen, right? Chunking is about how you can remember more in short-term memory in the storage if that, if you, if you understand that information in a meaningful way, if you take advantage of chunking. The episodic buffer is responsible for that. The influence of meaning in working memory, but also uh, the integration of information across the visual spatial sketch pad and the phonological and sign loops. Do different processes in working memory work independently of one another, or are they completely codependent on one another, or something in between? Well, studies of dual task performance in working memory tasks have attempted to answer that question. And just to remind you, in a dual task experiment, the primary task is what you're really interested in. The secondary task is something additional, the additional task that you have a person perform. Um, and to look at dual task performance in working memory, obviously both the primary and the secondary task have to require working memory. So for example, this woman who's trying to drive and put eye makeup on at the same time, uh, let's hope that driving is her primary task and that makeup application is her secondary task. Um, they certainly both, both tasks involve working memory. But the question is, do these two tasks, for example, the two tasks that this woman is doing right now, do they compete for the same resources? Do they have access to independent resources? How does it work? Well, it turns out that different parts of working memory can function independently of one another. It appears that the visual spatial sketch pad can function independently of the uh, phonological loop, at least the phonological loop. And let me give you an example. So if, uh, let's see, I'll do it up here. If I tap my chest and try to draw, uh, go, I can't even talk at the same time. If I tap my chest and then try to make circles with my head, it's a struggle, right? But it's very easy for me to tap my chest and hum. La 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 la. I don't even have to pay any attention to that at all. So when I use language and a visual task, it's easy. When I have two visual motor tasks that are trying to do two different things, it's harder. Right? So when the second task relies on the same part of working memory. It's drawing resources from the central executive, additional resources from the central executive. That makes it really challenging for working memory. So if you're trying to do two spatial tasks at the same time, it can be tricky. So for example, trying to find the keys to type on your cell phone as you're simultaneously giving your daughter a haircut, I would not recommend that at all. If you want to sing to yourself while you're giving the daughter, your daughter a haircut or have a conversation with her, that's great. But don't do a spatial task while you're trying to cut hair, which is essentially a visual spatial task. Come right back and we'll talk about working memory span with a recent connection to how people behave during the COVID pandemic. See you in a sec.